secret time. God dates and powers. I don't know of anybody who hasn't had problems with uh, fish fouling God baits, uh, including me. Um, they get frustrating at times, you know. They come out from under these docks, they window shop your bait, and they go right back where they came from. And it's the same thing the next day, same thing the day after that. There's nothing you can really do to try to trigger these bites. So instead of uh, doing nothing, you know, I figured, hey, let's, let's do something instead of keep doing what we're doing and seeing they're doing the same thing all over again. Um, so two of the things that I've tried have really done well, uh, better than, than nothing, of course. Um, one of the things I do is I use my 908 a lot for god bait fishing. Um, it's overkill for a lot of the baits that I have size-wise, but I use the rod for its length. And why, if you remember back in the old uh, Paul Ice days, the kneel and, cre kneel and reel crank with a crankbait, get that extra depth. Same concept with a god. I strongly feel like the reason those people, those fish follow is because they see you. You know, if you can see them, they can for sure as hell see you. So what I like to do is put this rod tip in the water as far as I can comfortably and get that bait down deep so I can't see it. Well, you can weight your bait. That helps as well. But it seems to be easier if you put your rod tip down in there, work it a little slower, and get that fish to react deeper than shallower. And that way they don't see you. Um, another thing that I like to do is make longer casts. That's the easiest way to fix it, or at least attempt to fix it. You know, it, it requires you super pin accuracy on the edge of a dock um, to make sure you don't hit the dock or make sure you get enough distance, don't hit the corner. You want to go all the way to the back and work your way out. It takes some practice throwing these big baits, you know, 30, 35, 40 yards sometimes. Um, sometimes you need to feather it in between a pontoon and a dock. That gets even harder. So those are two ways that I like to do. The third way, and I'm sure this is pretty new to a lot of people, um, is before you laugh, don't knock it, is I tie a teaser to the back hook of my, my guide bait. What I've done is I've tied the, uh, the line around all three prongs of the treble hook. So when it spins, the actual bait spins and it doesn't seem to wrap up as easy. I tie a little treble hook. Usually you want something a little bigger than this. I don't put any weight on it. I just tie three feathers on there, some flashy boo, and call it a day. This is a little smaller than what I normally use, but I like to use a little bit bigger hook. You need to practice your cast so that it doesn't get all hangled up. So a little side on cast, and you can feather it out there, and you can uh, get that cast down right. But this really, really seems to help more than anything else. A little bit of teaser behind your bait so you know they can focus on something smaller drag them out with this catch them with this almost like the sink the uh the glide bait senko trick you know you throw a senko where you see a file when you catch it well here's your senko right behind your glide bait so give that a try um don't use too big of a weight too big a line just make sure that, that it doesn't affect the, the, the action of your glide but i like to use a bigger bait bigger glide bait so that it, it can overcome the, the drag that the, uh, the line has on there. So uh, give this trick a try. Don't laugh at it. Try it before you knock it, and uh, see if that helps you catch some more big fish. I hope this helps.